So, let's talk a little about Game of Thrones. And I'm sorry, but I must rant a little about a TV show that was at one time the best show that was on TV, pretty much hands down by far, and no longer is. Yeah, it's sad but true. The show is in a precipitous decline, and all I can say is thank God that there's this is the last season, there's only a couple episodes left. Because of the, the decline is really, really, it was obvious last season, it's really obvious this season, and another year of this and the show would go the way of all other great TV shows and become just a mess and a parody of itself. Once upon a time there was a show called Roseanne, not the, not the rebirth one, but the original Roseanne. Um, I believe it aired originally in the 90s. There was a time. Season two, three, and four were was the best thing on TV by far. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you how good that show got. It was so real and so human and so hilarious and so well done. It was like watching a mini play night to night. There was a season for a period about three years where it was far and away the best thing on TV. First season was a little choppy, then it caught a rhythm, and then it was great for three, four years running, and then all of a sudden it turned into a absolute parody of itself. It did, went off the rails and never came back. The last season of the show is unwatchable. They win a lottery, some prim, it gets completely demented and goes completely off the rails. And that's exactly where Game of Thrones is headed. Now, let's start with the, the Battle of Winterfell. The Battle of Winterfell, I'm in the minority here. I thought it was excellent. I thought it was excellent. Not as plot. I get what the complaints are about it. But as spectacle, it was mind-bogglingly good. I put that up there with one of the three or four best episodes on the show ever. Best episodes would be stuff like Battle of Blackwater, <laughs> the Viper versus uh, the Viper versus the Mountain was the most mind-blowing thing I'd ever seen in my life. See, I, I came to Game of Thrones late in the game, and I started watching it after it had been on the air for a few seasons. So I knew the Red Wedding was coming. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but I'd heard of it, and when there was a wedding, I was kind of aware that something really shocking was about to happen. The Mountain vs. the Viper, I had no idea, and I was traumatized for days. Honestly, should never in my life had a TV show gotten that inside of me, and that just wrecked me. I was like, oh my God, couldn't believe it. So while we were watching the Battle of Winterfell, I was still in the back of my mind thinking, this is Game of Thrones, which means... When Daenerys almost goes down, I thought she was dead. I thought she was gone. I was, it was so exciting to watch. That's one of the things that Game of Thrones did a long time ago that really made it an experience, was that it totally violated the rules of TV engagement. Back when I was growing up in the 70s or 80s, there was no such thing as a TV show where the main character died. None. Ever. Didn't happen. Ever. Not once. So anytime you were watching a battle, the excitement was, the, the suspense was greatly mitigated by the fact that you knew that the main character wasn't going to be killed. And back in the days of Star Trek, uh, the original Star Trek, they used to, they used to have a thing called the, the guy in the red shirt. Every time they go down to a planet and get into a battle, it's the guy in the red, the guy wearing the red shirt is going to die. And sure enough, he did. But you would never, if you were watching a battle on Star Trek, there was no way on earth Captain Kirk, you know, Spock, Bones, none of them were ever going to bite it. That wasn't true of Game of Thrones. And with Game of Thrones, sometimes it was shockingly abrupt how quickly a main character could bite the dust. So I was watching the Battle of Winterfell thinking, this is Game of Thrones, which means anybody could get killed at any time. Now, as it turned out, they bowed to the conventions of TV after becoming more of a TV show over the years. And, you know, just as an aside, if you're watching anything else and they said, they led the battle with, if we kill the king, everybody dies. That's a standard trope. Starship troopers, it's how they won. I'm pretty sure it's how they won on Independence Day. Watching anything other than Game of Thrones, the second you heard that, you go, oh, that's how they're going to win. Oh, they're going to kill the king and everybody dies. Um, by the way, spoilers, <laughs> if you haven't seen any of these, don't keep listening. So, but the, the only difference in Game of Thrones is that I, I, I was so on the edge of my seat and I so thought that some of these characters were going to be killed that I was actually really relieved and overjoyed that it bowed to convention and they pulled it out in the final reel in a sort of, you know, not necessarily deus ex machina ending because they did sort of prepare the groundwork for that. She can teleport. She does.
does have mysterious assassin powers that were planted years ago. So it wasn't quite as outlandish as it seemed. It was about convention, yes. That's a standard plot device in almost every other movie. You know, I'm pretty sure Independence Day and Starship Troopers, both of those win the exact same way. And if you hear that in a movie, you know that's how, oh, if you hear, oh, the, if you kill the queen, everybody dies. And okay, they're going to kill the queen. <laughs> so, it's starting to become a standard TV product. Now, we go to the last episode, and it got a lot worse. Because not only is it becoming a standard TV product, but they're starting to do what other TV shows do, which is make you work too hard to keep uh, agreeing and approving of the things that it does. Let's go to the dragons. Now, I don't know how, if you've watched any of the complaints about this, but I've watched a few of them, and the complaints are well-founded. First of all, the dragons are flying 300 feet in the air. Again, spoilers if you haven't seen it. A dragon can't see a fleet of ships? Are you kidding me? A fleet of ships can sneak up on dragons that are flying three to 500 feet above, up in the sky. Then, they can take a dragon out with what looks to be a huge crossbow. So you're telling me, that, I mean, I'm watching this like, come on. I'm actually watching this, are you fucking kidding me? That's how you watch other TV shows. You know, there are other TV shows on TV that I watched for a few seasons because they had some cool stuff, but they make you work too hard. Uh, Gotham, for example, and Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Both of those shows were kind of cool, and I was with them for a little bit because they did some cool stuff, but then they make you work too hard because they do outlandish crap, and you're like, oh, my God, I can't, I, I, I can't in good conscience keep watching this. And that's how it's starting to get with Game of Thrones. You're telling me that a crossbow pointed at the sky, has enough pinpoint accuracy to hit a dragon in the neck and take it out, a moving target? There's no way on earth that could have happened. And furthermore, it defied the, the logic of the show itself. We had been told years ago, back when Game of Thrones was still Game of Thrones, and, we, and, and Khaleesi was going to bargain a dragon for the Unsullied, Jorah says to her, a dragon is worth way more than an army, Khaleesi. A dragon, we were told that by the show itself. Now we find out that these dragons are mysteriously, you know, they're pretty easy to kill, actually. You can shoot a huge crossbow at it and take it out. That's not very, that's, that's, that's not what we were led to believe. We were led to believe that three of these dragons were game-changingly nuclear weapons that gave her almost unimaginable power. Now we find out that these dragons are pretty darn easy to kill. And the only reason that the writers did it is to even the odds. You can, you can tell, well, we gotta do something to take that dragon out because if she still has two dragons, she's too powerful going into the final battles. It's exactly what happened. They, they decided that by committee, no matter how illogical the way they took the dragon out. Furthermore, if, if a dragon it's a fleet of ships, and they have crossbows aimed at the sky. A dragon can can easily circumvent the can easily circumvent the fleet of ships. Fly to the other side and come up behind them, and burn all the ships to the ground. <laughs> it never occurred to them. Very really easy for a dragon to do that. And we were led to believe that these were really 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 powerful weapons, and it turns out that they're not that powerful. They're somewhat more powerful than conventional weapons, but they can be taken out pretty easily. So the, the, the show starting to defy its own logic. That's the surest sign of decline in a show. When it starts to break its own rules, that's when the writers are starting to get lazy, not really think too hard. Nobody, and they go to the justified, nobody's going to really care. Well, Game of Thrones, we did really care. And the other thing about it that's even worse is they're starting to throw Daenerys under the bus. Looks like, I don't know for a fact, there's only two episodes left, but it looks like they're setting her up to be the mad queen or the bad guy and throw her under the bus. Now, we have been, we have followed her from day one. We have followed her journey and we've been led to believe that she was going to be the ruler of the Iron Thrones and she was at least a worthy claimant to the throne. And there was a lot of things we were told along the way about the goodness of her character and the idealism of her. Now they're kind of throwing that all out the window because they want to set up some kind of fake climax. Wherein she's the bad guy, now I guess we root for John? I don't really know. 
there's other rumors in other other things I've watched that Tyrion himself is a Targaryen. That's actually a plausible rumor. He did pet a dragon without burnt, being burnt to a crisp. And there's evidence to it. Tywin said to him, you're no son of mine. You're no son of mine. So it's possible they are setting us up for either John or Tyrion claiming the throne. But in the course of this, they are throwing one of the main characters that we followed the whole time under the bus, kind of unceremon unceremoniously. That's what other TV shows did. See, the reason why you're so, so much better hands with an actual author is because authors get invested in their characters just like you, the audience, do. If an author is writing a character like Daenerys Targaryen, he's not going to have her turn bad just to, you know, make, a, make some sort of cool climax by... He's, he's going to follow the logic of the character himself because he's a lot invested in the character, just like you, the audience, do. We have a lot invested in Daenerys Targaryen. We've had it for years. We've been following her rise. And yeah, she does some things that are questionable, but they can be justified in context, context of rulers of the time. So we still, in seasons past, we still had faith in her as an idealistic ruler who wants to free slaves and bring peace to the people. Now we're starting to be shown her, told, kind of pushed to see her as a bad guy just for convenience of plot devices. That's what other TV shows do. It's called lazy writing. And it's starting to show up in Game of Thrones. So just, you know, thank God that it's ending in the next two the next two episodes. Because another year of this and it would degenerate even further. There was a lot of stuff in the last season that I felt this way about. And the season prior too. But now it's starting to get to the point where I don't think I could keep watching if it keeps going down this road. So I'm glad they are wrapping it up. See, as far as I'm concerned, the dragons, we were, we were told something about the dragons way long ago. We were led to believe that three dragons is a powerful, game-changing, ruling hand. It can destroy entire armies. Now we find out that the dragons, because it's convenient for the plot, are actually a lot more vulnerable to conventional weaponry than we had been led to believe years ago. So in order for her to have, you know, a game-changing amount of dragons, she'd have to have ten or 15, then she could destroy whole armies. But five years ago, three years ago, four years ago, we were told that three dragons was game changing. And even one dragon was, was better than the Unsullied, the entire army of the Unsullied. But now we find out that one dragon can be taken down really easily. Why? Because it's convenient for the writers to get rid of the dragon to even the odds. That's called lazy writing. Honestly, that's called lazy writing. And it's something you're used to watching almost every other TV show under the sun. And I don't usually mind it in terms of TV. Because it's TV. I don't really care, you know. But Game of Thrones was different. Honestly, the first four seasons of Game of Thrones was the best thing on TV. As far as I'm concerned, it was the best show that I have ever seen. Now, I've never seen Mad Men, and I've never seen The Sopranos, and I've never seen The Wire. All those three shows have the same reputation. But I have seen Game of Thrones, and for the first four or five years, it lived up to the hype. It was, honest to God, the best show on TV. Now it's okay. It's still a cool show, but it's starting to make you work too hard to keep liking it and keep participating with enthusiasm, because it's, it's stretching its own reality too easily. I, you know, and just another aside, really briefly, how did they capture Misandra? They captured her, but they couldn't capture anybody else. They apparently destroyed the whole fleet. And they're, they're, people were swimming to the shore, and where were they? They could have killed everybody. <laughs> you know, that's the type of stuff. I don't know if that's completely how it went down. But that's the type of stuff when you're in the hands of a TV show that's starting to take easy outs and get lazy with its writing, that you start to see flaws everywhere, holes everywhere. You know? So, we'll see. I, I just say, thank God it's ending. Thank God it's ending because I really, really, really couldn't take it if it went the way of Roseanne. Because the last season of Roseanne, it's painful to watch because it's such a, it's such a, it's so awful compared to what it was. So there you go. There you have it. That's my two cents. Amen. <laughs>